What's up, people? I know it's been 500 years. I am not consistent with this video thing. I cannot seem to get consistent with it, especially when I'm not feeling good. Now, you guys are not allowed to judge me because I have a pencil in my hair and I also am laying in bed with a heating pad. Now, John was ever so kind enough to go to the store for me to get me a heating pad because I just blew mine out. Where, like, literally, I have it on all night, every night for the past, like, I don't even know, past couple couple days, maybe a couple weeks. And then I just leave it on all night, you know, like, as if it's not going to actually burn out and, you know, die. So, anyways, he was ever so kind enough to go and get it for me. So, thanks, boo. What's up, Mr. Puchetti? So, okay. I figured I'd hop on here real quick because I literally have this huge wealth of knowledge in my brain and I act like such a tough guy. I'm sorry, let me take that back. I am such a tough guy, but I make sure that I don't ever show weakness because, you know, weakness is never a good thing. I mean, you're allowed to be sick, I suppose, but you cannot show weakness. It's not a good thing, especially for females nowadays. Listen, they got you on the movies. You guys are taking over superheroes, putting on costumes, flying around, bossing around hyenas and, you know, Lion King and stuff. So this is not the time to show weakness, women. Okay? This is not a woman empowerment video by any means, but I am telling you, do not show weakness. Not now and not in 2020. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, we'll stop there. So anyways, the topic of discussion tonight is not necessarily soapbox, soapbox, okay? But for those of you that don't know my history, my very extensive history, I have been diagnosed. Let me go on the list. Bup, 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 bup. What up, Ron? Hi, um, Aaron. So endometriosis, interstitial cystitis, IBS, PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. IC is interstitial cystitis. And then you also have your new diagnoses two years ago, which was the pelvic congestion syndrome, okay? And there's a couple other things in there that is just not even worth mentioning. But everything is really, really messed up. I just need a new body from the belly button down, okay? And then I'll be all good. So anyways, long story short, I think it's so important to maybe, I guess the way to put it is maybe not overlook things that are happening in your life or maybe happening with your wife, um, you know, because you just, you just don't know what's going on half the time. Okay. So back when I was 16 years old, they diagnosed me with endometriosis. They told me I was absolutely crazy for years, like super crazy for years telling me that I just was in a lot of pain. You're, you, you get cramps, you get a menstrual cycle. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be in a lot of pain. Duh. Take some all get over it. So didn't work that way. Back of the doctor's office, back of the doctor's office. Finally, they went in, they did a laparoscopy because it's the only way that you can diagnose endometriosis. They did the laparoscopy, went in, scraped it all out. Now, granted, here's some facts for you guys, because apparently endometriosis is becoming a lot more popular on commercials, on TVs. They're doing more medications for it. Everybody's claiming the fame that they have this endometriosis. For those of you that know people that have endometriosis, endometriosis can be a debilitating disease. Now it's not cancer, okay? For those of you that don't know what it is, it's basically when the scar tissue that's supposed to grow on the inside of your ovaries and fallopian tubes and your uterus, it all grows on the outside of those organs and it connects them all, okay? And it doesn't feel good. Could you just think about some glue like pulling together your organs all day? It's kind of one of those things, okay? But the real shitty part about this, okay, is that when they go in to do the scope, they can only see, fact, 10 to 15% of the scar tissue. So how much are they really removing? Then you find out, now I found this out after my third laparoscopy, then you find out that when they go in, they actually create more adhesions when they go in. Now, do you need to get, get one done just to diagnose it properly? Yeah, you do. But when they go in, they create more adhesions that you need another surgery for in like three, four, five, six, if you're lucky years. Mine, I wasn't so lucky. And I've had a surgery every two years since 04, three years, give or take. So anyways, you know, the interstitial cystitis and the IBS and the, the you know, PCOS, they're all wrapped up into a little bowed package and handed to you said, hey, guess what? You have been blessed with an amazing body. You look great, except you just totally screwed up on the inside. So anyways, I've battled this for years, okay? Me and John opened up Titan Medical Center seven years ago, 
All right, now when we open a medical center, we have a hormone replacement therapy center. Hmm, you would think. The first people to get their hormones right is going to be John and Therese. Duh. So this is where I was introduced to Arimidex, which is an estrogen blocker. And I was also introduced to Capergoline, which also lowers prolactin levels, for those of you that don't know this. Because... Females, I don't think that a lot of people know out there, and I, I think it's like maybe becoming a little bit more educated world out there, but I don't think females understand. Like, you guys do. I, I heard some super asinine comment the other day with some guy that was like, I don't know what female that would take testosterone. Now, listen, me personally, I am not an advocate of females taking testosterone injections. There's maybe maybe one or two people that I've seen that they've done okay with it and they just didn't do well with all the rest of the other formats that there is out there but females do need some testosterone okay we also need some estrogen and we also need some progesterone to balance everything out when you're postmenopausal, your estrogen goes bye bye okay when your ovaries aren't working your testosterone goes bye bye this is when you start feeling bad and all these other fun things happen but epidemic of the I'm going to call it of the year, okay? Because I've, I've, I'm seeing it. I've seen it over the years, and I'm starting to see it more and more and more and more and more. And I'm seeing it in guys now too. So it does make me believe what I'm about to tell you. So these estrogen levels on the blood tests, they're coming back super, super high. Like super high. For females even, they're coming back like triple digits. Like like three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times higher than it should be. Same thing for the guys. And it's like, okay, so there's definitely an underlying issue here. It must be either the deodorants we're, we're wearing, laundry detergents we're putting in our laundry, food that we're eating, whatever's in the environment. It is an epidemic and it's going to happen. Now, there might be a nice little small percentage of you guys out there that may not ever need any hormone replacement or ever need anything to be corrected, but it's happening. Like it's happening a lot. And a lot of people, they just get up and they go with their day. Like me, it kills me to be in bed. I cannot be in bed. This drives me absolutely insane because I am that girl that goes 500 miles per minute and everything has to be perfect. And I'm like, go, 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 go. I'm the one that lights the fire and everybody's ass at work. So, you know, if I don't have my own fire, how the hell am I supposed to light a fire? Okay. Um, thanks for my, my stuff. John was so nice. You went and got it for me. What's up, guys? <laughs> What's up, guys? John from Titan. Yeah. So, anyways, guys. So these are the biggest ones. This one has 14 assessments. See, so I got one. Course. This is not what I'm going to be and doing, this though. One says so, 30 seconds. getting back to what I was saying, thank you, babe. Um, in reference to high estrogen levels, okay? So, what can high estrogen level symptoms cause you? All right? Headaches, mood swings bloating, never be able to shred up, never be able to cut up, you might feel like you're almost bipolar. And some people might even put you on antidepressants or bipolar medication. You know, it's just, it happens all the time. Libido sucks, vaginal dryness, that's a low estrogen symptom, high estrogen symptom, breast tenderness. I mean, these are things that happen on a day-to-day -day basis. And a lot of times you're like, oh shoot, it's just my menstrual cycle. Oh, shoot, maybe just the week after my menstrual cycle. Oh, shoot, maybe just the week before my menstrual cycle. No, you have a problem. So anyways, they went in, they did a couple scopes. So they clean it out every time. I end up back at the doctor's office, surgeon's office, whatever, every two years. It's inevitable. Here I am again, back again. But, you know, now I've got something new that I don't really... I'm not too familiar with and now I have to make myself familiar with it. You got to love when that happens, right? Like, hey, you know, you got this one thing and it's really, really, it's really affecting your day-to-day -day life. So you're going to have to fix it. Now, remember guys, I don't have time to go do surgery. Okay. I, I can't, I, I don't have the surgery that I would do would be like a uterine lift for what's going on right now. And that's a four week recovery time. I'm not doing that. I'm just not doing that. <laughs> I mean, we're about to close on a building. I'm in the midst of doing 500 different things. There's just, it's not, it's not like possible. So I have to, now I have to come up with how am I going to do this on a short term level where I can maybe even get a temporary fix, almost like a bandaid on a bleeding wound. I hate to say it that way because I tell people all the time, don't do that. But I mean, it's not like I have a medication that's going to fix it. So basically, my endometriosis is there. It's not going away. Okay. So I'm in pain every day regardless. I always put a smile on my face. Always go to work. Always make sure I set the tone. That's just what you got to do. Right. But 
when you have this little issue going on with a retroverted uterus, it sits back and it sits back in an area that you don't like it to sit back in, okay? And it can also cause like some leg swelling. It can also cause, you know, some tingling. It can definitely cause some pain. It can cause some compression on the colon. It can cause a lot of different things that are super uncomfortable. And the only way to do it is lift it back up again. Well, guess what? Two years ago, I had a uterine lift. Apparently, it did not stay lifted. Maybe they needed thicker rubber bands, okay? But it didn't stay. <laughs> so at this point, I'm just going to have to figure out what I'm going to do. So I guess I think from what I've read so far, and I'm collecting data because I do know way too many people in the medical field not to make sure I have the best top vein surgeon slash whatever surgeon to do whatever without me having to go under the knife and get cut up. <laughs> I don't even know what it's called. It's like a videography and then they go in there and they embolize the vein that's not, you know, the good vein and it'll stop for a short period of time. Like I said, temporary fix. But guys, I am not laying up in bed every day like this. I'm not. This is not going to happen at all. I'm not doing this no more. So, and you guys cannot judge me, okay? Because I do look like shit. But anyways, I do want to say one more thing while I'm on here. Um, besides the fact that you guys should all get your blood work checked and make sure that it's in, in line. Now, when the blood work comes back and it's great, then by all means, you know what? You better start looking at some deeper things like your relationship or something else that's going on in your life, or stressors, there's something else, you know? So, and endometriosis doesn't show up on a blood test. The only thing that will show up that will reflect it directly is gonna be the high estrogen levels. And if you have high estrogen levels, they do lead to other problems down, down the line, okay? So um, anyways, while I have you guys on here, hi Jeff, how are you guys? What's up people? Hi Tunisia. So, I just want everybody to know, because I, you know, I feel like everybody's kind of got like the uh, side of me for the past like week. You know, I had a, my second kidney infection in the past six weeks. I was in the ER two days ago. It's been a fun week for me. Okay, it's been fun, real fun. Anyways, whenever that side comes out, I, you know, I'm already like super, super duper real and is very blunt as they come. I'm so black and white. I don't even know any other way to be. There is no gray area for me. So I feel like it's like needed for me to say this on here because we've definitely had a lot of people come back around to us like, you know, whether something took place, something happened, you know, whatever. Let's not call it a falling out per se, but you know, one of those things where like somebody does you wrong and you know, you just say, all righty, guy, and move on with your happy life because me and John don't talk shit about other people. So with that being said, I do need to say I might be the most nicest and coolest person you have ever met in your entire life. Okay? John agrees, right? Yeah. See? He agrees. <laughs> but no, seriously. I am like the coolest chick ever. Promise. I promise. I know I look mean sometimes. And sometimes I look really nice and I am not. So, coolest chick ever. I'll always be real with you. Super loyal. That's how I roll. But, I am that person that if you cross over the bridge and it burns as you're walking across, or you light it on fire after you get across the bridge, your bridge is gone. There are no construction workers that are going to rebuild your bridge for you. There's nobody that I'm going to hire to rebuild it. I will not take your money to rebuild it. You're done. You are done so forever. So I had to make the statement on purpose for the simple fact that I just, I feel like some people forget because we're just, you know, me and John, we're so nice so much all the time. And I don't mind it. You know, I think I got into that. I finally have gotten to that point where I'm like, okay, I think I can, I think I can be nice, you know, because I wasn't always nice, but I'm like, yeah, I think I can do this. I can, I, I can do this nice thing. Okay. But I still have that person deep down inside that resides in me. That is not that person you want to mess with or cross over. But what I'm trying to say is we've got a lot of people come back to us that may have crossed over that bridge, lit it on fire, put some oil on top of it. And we said, okay, cool, whatever. And then circle back around. And unfortunately, once somebody, I'm just, once somebody burns the bridge, I just can't, you know, I just, I can't. Can I forgive? 
and can I move on? Totally. Will I be friends with you and fake to your face and say that we're going to be the best friends ever? No. Right? What did you say? No. Right? Right. See, John agrees. <laughs> So anyways, guys, I had to give you guys an update because I feel like every time I talk to somebody, whether it's a patient, a friend, whatever, I feel like I have to repeat everything that's taken place over the last two weeks. I am on my way to recovery. I will feel better. I will get better. I promise. We'll get to the bottom of it. We'll get it all fixed up. So don't worry. I don't need any lectures about how stressed out my life is and how I need to do this and that, whatever. Anything that you're going to tell me is not something I don't tell 20 people a day, okay? I already know. I'm just being stubborn and stupid, okay? Um, but on that note, I hope everybody has had a wonderful week. I really hope that I could have shed a little bit of light on some of this stuff because you never know, man. Sometimes when your cramps are bad and they're bad, bad, like you can't get out of bed bad, you might really have an issue. And my issue, it sucks because I've... I'm on progesterone. I take a small dose of cabergoline and I take an astrazole. That's because everybody in my family on both sides has breast cancer, except for my mom. Skipped her, so it's probably definitely going to get me. So I got to be super, super, super prevented about it. I don't want to end up with that. Um, but, you know, it's, it's so, so, so hard sometimes. I feel like I, I just, I definitely want to say this. And I'm, it's taking a lot for me to get on this live and admit this on live. Um, but thanks, Mark. I really, and thanks, thanks, Matt. Um, it's taken a lot for me to get on here and I have to say it. It is so freaking hard to be so freaking nice and smile all the time and pretend everything is perfect when you feel so bad, especially when it's on the inside. So it's not like I got a broken arm or like, you know, I'm in a cast or I'm walking around with like a sleeve or something's wrong or a cut that you can actually see like on my face, you know? Cause then you would know, oh damn, what happened to you? Or, oh my God, what's going on with you? So I mean, you can't see it. It's not like visible to the eye. So it's kind of like, whoop. And I'm the kind of person that I don't like sympathy. Everybody knows where to find sympathy, right? Have I ever told you guys where to find it? Do you want to know where to find it? Sympathy? Sympathy does go out to people that need sympathy. But if you want sympathy, you can find it in the dictionary between shit and syphilis. I bet you'll find it right there. I tell people that want sympathy that don't deserve it. I tell them to look there for it all the time. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I'm glad I can catch you guys up. I promise I'm not just like, eh, I don't care. Let me not post anything. I don't care. Because that's definitely not me. But I'm going to have to be me no matter what. You know? So hope all of you guys are well. Thanks for tuning in. And I will talk to you guys soon.